He is here. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Peace, love, harmony. That's enough of your happy, clappy love nonsense. We've got this covered. We're in charge now. And we'll make sure you get a rigorous Catholic education. Oh, shit. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. What makes a man? The Jesuits, they say that if you give them a boy up to the age of seven, they will show you the man. And for an extra fiver, they'll even cover up the scars. <laughs> what makes a comedian? I'm often asked that. Why did I become one? And why do I offend people? And some people think that I'm gratuitously trying to offend. I am enjoying offending them. I'm not just trying to make them laugh. I've been called a blasphemer. I've been called a filth merchant. Ban him! He's a filth merchant! Usually said with little, little spittle flex like that. Christ, would you look at that? I think I can fix it. Don't mention these to the sisters. They let the living shite knocked out of me. Why? Don't know, really. They seem to enjoy it. Don't worry, you'll be all right. Everyone knows me. No one will mess with my brother. See you break. If you're with me, you're fine. So God has shown himself to all of us. We all know this in our hearts, but even though he has shown himself to us, put your hand down, he remains a mystery. A wonderful and beautiful mystery. I said hand down. Please the toilet, sister. <laughs> Silence! Stand up. Hold out your hand. Find Mr. O'Brien and ask him for his mop and bucket. And you'll be sitting in your own stink for this day. I'll teach you to hold on to your filthy business. And who's this? Cheeking me with a look. Stand up. What's your name? David Tynan O'Marney. I know your brother. A self-styled joker, and that's all he'll ever be. Are you the same as him? We're similar. Hold out your hand. Palm or knuckles? You'll never amount to anything if you always choose the easy option. <laughs> What's up with you? Sister hit me. She's an evil old cow. What for? Nothing. Yeah, same as ever. I can't get back at her, Davy. She's a bloody nun. Sister Mary, 
What are you doing? Where are you going with that? Oh, for the love! What? In the name my of... My trip, Sister Mary, it was an accident all my life. John Tynan O'Marney, that was no accident. You are coming with me. It was an accident, oh. Sister, all my life. No good comes a laughing. Ow! And don't forget, we've got you for 10 years. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I'm ready to hear your confession. I... I punched someone in the face. I'm sorry, Father. Go on. And when they went down, I kicked them in the nuts. Then I bent their arm behind their back until they screamed. That's disgraceful. What, what kind of a woman are you? And I've done that ten times this week. What? That's... <laughs> oh, thank God it's you, sister. I thought there was some lunatic in there. Drag you into the cogs, crush you into a bloody pool, and then splurge you into the pool, leaving you smashed and mangled and gulping in water. <laughs> you know, I don't think it was. I think I'm right in this book. You know, prove me wrong. <laughs> you like the boys. I can tell when you're making it up. Oh, my life. I was standing there with my back turned. I heard this kind of rumbling noise. I turned. I had to jump out of the way of a roll of runaway newspaper print. <laughs> I came within a nose hair. I was squashed as flat as one of your mother's cakes. Stories. Everything you say needs sub-editing. And don't change the subject. We have to talk about money. We'll be fine. Quick! Mum! Dad! Davey's had an accident. What's this? What now? What's wrong? Hi. Hi. How did that happen? Come on, sir. You're supposed to be looking after him, not knocking bits it, off. It wasn't my fault on my life. Come on. Can you take it off? Show us what it looks like. Does it hurt? Not much. What did you tell them? I said you told me not to do it. Hey, leave that on. That's all right. Davy told us I shouldn't have blamed you. Yes, you were quite cruel there, Daddy. Got to be at least worth a couple of shillings. Get on with you, you, you cheeky beggar. And I don't believe for one second it wasn't your fault. Are you sure you told me the truth? Don't ever do anything that your brother says. Ever. He's a madman and he's an idiot and you're your own man. But you have to stick by him because he's your brother. Do you think Sister Mary loosened it? Could be. Could be. She certainly got the build for joint loosening. What's the matter? I stop your moaning. It's barely the fingernail. It's the whole end. And you need to scratch your arse and pick your nose at the same time. <laughs> Mark my word, it'll be a great friend to you, that finger. A great friend. How? Well, you'll never be stuck for a story, will you? Yeah, but... Not the real one, Dunderhead. The ones you make up. What kind of an idiot chooses the truth over a good story? You've done it already. Sister Mary, with her arms like hams, knocked the top of it off with a cane for forgetting the Pope's birthday. <laughs> Don't stop there. Have a different story every time someone asks you. And never tell the truth. Never. A great friend. And if all else fails, it'd be great for scaring the girls away. 
Why would I need to do that? You're a good-looking boy. You take after your daddy. With a face like that, you're going to need something to give you a bit of peace. <laughs> it was a joke. It was a joke. There's nothing wrong with the joke, for God's sake. <clears throat> when I say fire, you shoot right there. I'm sorry, Peter. I can't do it. I'm not worthy to be crucified in the manner of our Lord Jesus. I beg you, in the name of all that's holy, turn me upside down. Stick or spin again? Uh, spin, please, Centurion. <laughs> I know you're scamming. I am not. If you're actually ill, just say you're ill. There's no need for any of this. I think it was the ham. I dropped it on the floor and the dog licked it stuff. That's a pure sign of overplanning with ill intent. If you send me to school, you're as good as whacking me across the knuckles yourself. Go on then, Dad. Get it over with. What are they going to whack you for? Nothing. Same as always. And what nothing is it this time? According to them, it's for blasphemy. Jesus Christ. Whereas I'd say it's for following an argument true to its logical conclusion. Well, you've got a gob on you, all right. Come on. I have a cup of tea going cold. I love this garden. Not digging it or any of that our sake. I love sitting in it. Making your mother laugh. Knowing that I've looked after my family best that I can. I've gone head on for life. For work. Job in a paper. Politics, international problems, weighty issues. I thought that'd take care of all the big stuff. But here, off to one side. Just my bit of peace. Hey, 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 sit down. You're going to your own execution, no need to run. You can be anything, Davy. You've got belief, a steel core. You'll be away one day. Just need a little push. Like what? And if I knew that, I'd give it to you, wouldn't I? But something will turn up. It nearly always does with life. Especially if you have a good look around. Sometimes, even when you don't look around. Smell that. It's rain. The greatest country in the world, this. Don't forget that. Ah, work and school aren't going anywhere, are they? Did I ever tell you how my mate Miles' hair went white? No. Don't let your mum know that I told you. It was the winter of 23. A heavy snow fell faintly over the whole country for weeks on end. Covered everything. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is a true story from my childhood. A story which rocked me, changed me, forever. <laughs> One snowy winter when I was very young, we moved way, way out into the countryside to stay in an old, almost derelict manor house. One half of this house was a burnt shell. The previous owners, a 
father and his son had fallen out and they had divided the house in two with a wall, a thick wall. They never spoke. Now, one day when the son was away on a rare trip into town, a terrible fire broke out and the father tragically perished. When the son returned, the house cooled down. One evening, he ventured into the father's side around dusk and he found terrible marks on the wall, chipped away bricks. And he came to the chilling and horrifying conclusion that these marks must have been made by his desperate father as he banged forlornly on the wall, trying to attract his son's attention as the house burnt around him. And suddenly, he heard a devastating scream. <coughs> And he felt something jump on his back and claw at him. And he ran and he ran from the building as fast as he could. And he never stopped. That evening, his hair turned completely white. He never returned. Now, of course, I was fascinated by this story. And my brother, of course, challenged me to go inside and see if I could find the marks. I accepted the challenge and one cold, dark, Moonless night, I plucked up my courage. And with just a torch to light my way, I crept inside the abandoned part of the house and clambered and climbed over the charcoal floorboards and staircase and up through cobwebs and rubble until eventually I found my way into the room. And there, on the blackened wall, for a fleeting moment, I caught a glimpse of the marks before my torch stuttered and failed. In the pitch black, I groped my way towards the wall, and with my hand, I reached out to see if I could trace the marks. And it was at this time that I had a curious feeling that I was not alone. I felt something I can only describe as a presence. Something or someone was directly behind me, and icy breath made the hairs on my neck stand. I was terrified, rooted to the spot, and I felt something my stomach and I felt it start to move up towards my rib cage and beyond and as it rose higher and higher towards my neck I summoned up all my courage and I seized it and it was cold and it was clammy and I bit down on it <laughs> and that ladies and gentlemen is how I came to lose my finger <laughs> it wasn't because I was holding a glass like this and it dissolved. I've got your back, Davy. I'm looking out for you now. And I'm looking out for you. going to be a few changes, obviously, and... Do we have to move house? 
We do. We don't have your daddy's money coming in anymore. Are we poor? No. No, we're not poor. We're just... Everyone at the funeral was saying what a great fella dad was. He was. And how he was brilliant at his job and dedicated. He was all those things. So won't the papers see us, right? They're helping. When you leave school, you'll be able to get jobs at any of the Dublin papers. If you want. There are other debts. Look, leave that alone. We are poor. Aren't we? Gathered here today to mark the final journey of the great Mysterio. Mm -hmm. I think we might be interested in that story, but we'd need to come and see you. Would you be willing to be quoted by name in the paper? You would? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll just need to take a few details. She's gone. As mean as none, that one. I'm sure she snitched on me last time. Did you have to pay for the call? No. But there have been pointed lectures on the price of international dialing and the strain it puts on honest Irish business. <laughs> hey, Tash. believe the women here and they're not just for looking at like a home they actually do stuff what stuff and there's no nuns or priests and actually look for them why would you do that <laughs> not a piece published today butchered by subs hardly recognized it you're too good for them it's got to be appreciated at work can't wait to leave here and get back to butlands oh, they bloody love me there i was thinking of giving london a go do what newspapers of course oh yeah give it a go if it doesn't work out, I can get you a job with me. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence, but uh, red isn't really my colour. <sighs> Is there one with a bit more room in the shoulder? Maybe we could put a dart in this. Morning, campers. I, as I suspect many of you know, come from Ireland, a very rainy country. So rainy, in fact, that if you ever meet an Irish man with a suntan, it's probably rust. <laughs> in Dublin, they say that if you can see the hills surrounding the city, then it's about to rain, and if you can't see the hills, then it's already raining. <laughs> but that is not the reason so many Irish people come over here. No, it is sex. Over here, you have sex before marriage. In Ireland, they don't. So the Irish come over here. <laughs> Two Irish men chatting about the same subject. I never had sex with my wife before marriage, did you? Other fellow says, I don't know, what's her name? <laughs> and that was the reason I started the affair. I couldn't help it. He was so good looking. Hmm. Black curly hair, strong arms. He walked straight up to me and kissed me on the mouth. He held me tight. I had to respond. I reached out towards him and touched. <laughs> Go on, my child. Oh, there you are. When's bedtime? After the drinking. You're not even halfway through yet. <laughs> Um, the dancers aren't here. There is no one on stage. Sounds like a serious problem. What are you going to do? Well, I'm, I'm new. Can't you do something? I'm Joe. You want me to go on? Yeah, quick, before they riot. Want to make your button stage save you? I don't know. Filling in until somebody rescues us? A few jokes, a few stories. I'm winging it. I think I'll do my Jerry Lewis impression. They love that. Okay, I'll do mine too. 
see who's funniest. Okay, calm down, calm down. Good evening, Cumpers. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> now, we've been as quick as we can so you can stop with all the chanting. Yeah, and the wailing. Try to keep it down, eh? And before we start, shouts of rubbish and get off. They're really not helpful. No, they're not. And we'll just ignore them anyway, so... We will. Now, you might be wondering what we're doing on. You might, you might. And you're right to wonder, because if we're on stage, something has gone very badly wrong. <laughs> not as wrong as it's about to go. That's true, that's true. <laughs> I'm gonna tell a joke. Ooh. Are you sure about that? It's about these two Irish fellas. Eerie. <laughs> so two Irish men walk into a pub. Oh, I know this one. I'll join in when you're ready. And the landlord says, we're closed. Well, then how did we get in? <laughs> we stormed that, Davy. You know, we weren't half bad. Well, I wasn't. You stumped the place up. <laughs> doing it your whole life. Big brass balls on you, little bro. <laughs> there you go, boys. You were great. Made out night. Thanks, Clive. You're a gentleman. How does that work if you're doing that for a living? Like, do you get an agent first, or do you just get on with it? I don't know, but you should definitely do that. You can do it. I know you can. But you can, too. Let's do it together. Be a double act. Yeah, great idea. We are stuff you, you know? Hey, we're just a pair of jokers. I stuff you to the nuns and the priests and the poverty and the starting in the post room. Yes, yeah, stuff you, stuff you, and stuff you. And we'll have, we'll have proper money. Hey, we're doing all right. No, I'm not going back to the arse of the trousers, living in a shithole days. We could do this together. Yeah, together. To the tiny little Marnies. Cheers. He's my brother. So what? Hey, no, I will take his place. Uh, shoot me instead. No, I will not allow it. You are my brother. Shoot me. No, no, shoot me. No, shoot me. Fire! We want to send a message to your da. I'm not allowed to speak to you. You're the IRA. It's not a speaker message. Ow! You are Brian Laverty, aren't you? No! Well, get your dad to pass the message on to Brian Laverty's dad, will you? And that is how I lost my finger. you were coming. But I've only seen you on new faces. I thought I'd better come and see you live. And? I think you'd be very good at presenting. Well, don't overpraise me. It might go to my head. No, it is praise. So you're quicker on your feet than most comics. You can react. So being the host, introducing the next acts, you know, filling the little gaps with jokes, keeping the whole show rolling, I just, I just think it'd be rather marvellous. Oh. There's a tour I think you should do. Helen Shapiro, money's acceptable. I'll do it. And there could be another one in Australia. Great. There's just one small ish thing. How do you feel about changing your name? Dave? <laughs> How many clients have you got whose surname begins with A? You are remarkably professional for a beginner. Alan. Dave Allen. How does that sound? Sounds like a top comedian. I know, I've got a lot to learn. Mm, good, Dave Allen. Yes, I like it. I like it. There's a ring to it. Yeah. Tonight at the London Palladium, Dave Allen. Tonight on BBC One, the Dave Allen Show. That's got even more of a ring to it. 
Wheresoever my arrow doth land, there shalt thou bury me. Uh. Uh. Didst thou catch that? No. Uh, Robin, can you do another one? then for tomorrow <laughs> brown or blue what kind of brown or blue sorry blues out is that brown well the tests have come back and I'm afraid you're not going to be able to eat tomatoes that's a shame but I think I can manage that you'll also have to avoid eggs oh no I love eggs but I suppose I'll get used to it in time. And you won't be able to touch anything alcoholic. <laughs> that won't be a problem. What's going on? Why aren't you with your youth? Are you a coward? No, sir. And what's the matter? Sir, we're about to go into battle for the first time. And... What is it? Spit it out, man. Sir, have you ever... Have you ever killed a man? Yes, yes, I fear I have. What's it like? It's a damned thing. But ours is not a reason why. Do your duty, soldier. I will. And thank you, sir. <laughs> what do you mean, no? That's a fantastic slot. Seven o'clock on ITV. It's not fantastic for me. You'll be watched by millions. Of children and families expecting family entertainment. Exactly. I prepared a show for 10 o'clock and my material is for adults. Well, change it. This is an opportunity. For a disaster. What? Look, I don't want to argue with you. You're doing a very good impression. You're a Lou Grade, you run everything, you make or break careers. Clearly, you know what you're doing. Well, thank you for the endorsement. But I do, too. And I have a contract which says that my show goes out at 10 o'clock, and that's when it's going out. No one's heard of you outside of Australia. What makes you think you can come in here and tell me how to run my business? The contract makes me think that, and it's going to make you think that, too. Still happy with no trouser flow, sir? Yes, I want it to be timeless. And the fit. Thank you, it's perfect. Dave, page four. Yeah. Dave. We are honored, a wise and powerful director general. <laughs> you may rise. Have you come to see the dress rehearsal? Do you know, I spent more time defending you than on any other BBC-related activity. <laughs> and I've just heard that you've been banned from Australian TV as well as Ireland. Is that true? 
Possibly. How did you manage to get banned from Australia? A masturbation reference. It's a very popular pastime, apparently. Yes, well, luckily the audience finds you very funny. And occasionally, so do I. But no, Dave, I haven't come to the rehearsal. You see, we've had a complaint from someone of more than usual prominence and importance. Who, His Holiness? Uh, some arsehole of an MP? You know, you could always abandon reason and try... You want me to tell the Lord Provost of Glasgow to... where to go? Is that someone I should have heard of? Yes. And he objected in the strongest possible terms to your Pope striptease sketch. Oh, good. We spent a very pleasant half an hour out Catholicing each other. And I was on the point of waving my rosary beads and marking myself with ashes when he backed down. Well, I would apologize, but it, it, it's not my fault. No, of course it isn't. Anyway, keep it up. We need a series every year, from now until forever. The BBC will always defend you, Dave, so long as you keep them laughing. Do you have any last requests? I would like a cigarette. And uh, smoking is very bad for the health. Fire! I've got a factor joke. It is actually compulsory. I suppose anybody here vote for her? Someone must have. It is a good one, promise. Must be all the old people that aren't here that voted for her. I see a few white hairs on you, mate. Hey, yeah, you. What's your name? Dave. Dave. What do you do, Dave? I'm a comedian. What do you do? <laughs> Funny. You won't thank me, but I finally remember to bring in my memorabilia. Do you have a moment? Okay, sure. I've got the lot. Of the HS of your Alan Bennett play. Mm -hmm. Programs from the Royal Court stage appearances. Oh, wow, look at that. And of course, Dave Allen at large videos. Your best work, I think. Have you got a pen? Oh, yes, that would help. Okay. And here. Bang on time, as ever. Is this piece of shite creeping up your arse then boring it off from the inside again? <laughs> Are you all funny in your family? I still can't believe you think I'm joking just because I say it with a smile. <laughs> You're all right. Out of breath. How'd you get here? I walked. From the hostel? Yes, from the hostel. It's miles. I left money for a taxi. Do you know, if you'd let me pick you up... I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back, uh, never. It was never soon enough for you? Wait here. Hasn't got to that stage yet. All right, come on then.
We're not late. Christ! Are you trying to break my legs for real? You know, they have counselling for angry people too. I'm not angry. Then slow down. You only come to make sure I'll actually go. Would you go without me? Probably not. Then I haven't been wasting my time. <laughs> An escort to the Last Chance Saloon. Went to a comedy club last night. Well, are you still the best? Comedy's changing. Getting younger, more political. Don't worry about the new fellas. They're all rubbish. They won't last. You are the godfather. They all look up to you. When did you last see a new comedian? I don't need to see them to know they're not a patch on you. Even if you can't get a series on for love nor money these days. I've got the specials. I sell out theatres. I could go back any time. You're not on the box, you're gone. Everyone knows that. I'll get another series when I feel like doing one. Maybe, if they need something for the old folks. Apparently, comedy's changing. People still like what I do. They do, so stick to what you do. You do it adequately, mostly. I was the godfather a minute ago. I'm proud of the way you're coping with being washed up. Adversity is the true measure of the man. I'm sorry if you thought I was being patronizing. Oh, you fucking know you were. But you don't need to change your act. Your audience like you for what you are. I do know my own audience. So shut up, John, and don't presume to give advice to me, the great and all-knowing comedian. That's not what I'm saying. You know, maybe you should take this as a warning, start changing your act. It'd be a tragedy if you were living on the tiny storm in a teacup scandals of the 70s about all the old religious bollocks that no one gives a shite about. You should be looking forward. Who's not gonna respect that? Are you determined to have a row? Good. I just want to be treated with a minimum of respect. Come on. I appreciate that you've succeeded in life until now, and I haven't, but you've no need to ram it down my throat. I'm not doing that. I've, I'm going out of my way not to do that. And making it totally obvious that's what you are doing. It's a bloody tricky line to walk. Oh, don't make me feel worse than I already do. I'm not. I'm getting you to your appointment. Would it hurt you to pretend that my advice was welcome and wise? Oh, John, you're right there, you alcoholic shit for brains. I hadn't thought of it like that. You feel that. I don't make you feel it. Yes, you do. You always have. Come and be a comedian like me. I'll fix you a meet and get you an agent. Yeah, and you never turned up for any of them. You're shouting at me now. You didn't, though, did you? You've got faith. In spite of all the church bashing, you believe in yourself. And I know why, too, because you were always the favorite. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were, lapping it up like it was your due. What good did it do me? He was dead by the time I was 12. You were Dad's favorite? You were Mum's favourite. Christ, no wonder you've got such a massive ego. <laughs> you have. All comedians do. Some courage, I grant you, but mainly a massive ego. That's why I couldn't do it. Why I never made the meetings. Wait! Hey! Christ! Watch out! Bastard! What are you doing? What? Sorry, mate. But it was completely reckless. You could have killed someone. All right, calm down, Grandad. I'm just having a laugh. You. Hey! You apologize, you maniac. Oh, shut up, lad. You're not even disabled. Don't you speak to my brother, and neither are you. I... Hey, you're that bloke. Um... <sighs> oh, don't tell me. Um... No, 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 no. We haven't got time for your brain to clank round Einstein. He's Dave Allen, and you nearly crushed him. And his brother. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Dave Allen, I remember you. Of course it's right. He knows who he is, and he's going to kick your arse. Yeah, yeah, my dad's a big fan of yours. Come on, let's go. We're going to be late. Oh, well, yeah, just a minute. Um... Can I get an autograph? Not even a please. No, you can't. Uh, I wasn't speaking to you, Trampy. I was speaking to him. No, piss off. I don't know what my dad was laughing at. I always thought you were shit. You can't even steer a fucking wheelchair. Why should we care what you think? <laughs> Nobody messes with a tiny nomad, brothers. No. Mainly because it takes too long to say it and they can't pronounce it. What are you doing? I was going to give myself a moment. Dealing with hecklers is stressful. <laughs> you can't even steer a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I always said you were funnier than me. No, you didn't. I did. You don't have to get another series. I mean, you could call it a day. You've done it all. No, no, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep trying. You know, maybe there's more. I could still surprise myself. Mom, push. We're nearly there. 
I am not the same as you. I'm the funniest man in the pub. I'm not a comedian. They're different things. Yeah, you could have had... No, no could have, should have. I hate your success. It highlights my failure. You're not a failure. You're not a failure, Johnny. You've worked, you've had fun, and... And? Exactly. I worked and drunk and I am like, Jesus, that was quick. Where did all the time go? But everyone thinks that. I think that. Don't compare us. Why not? We are similar. You're rich, famous and funny. You've been all over the world. You've had a wife and kids. Look at me. I've got nothing. Nothing. I am nothing. I've drank my whole life away and I've no one to blame except myself. Well, don't look at me and think it's all perfect. I've made mistakes, I've made a lot of mistakes. My marriage, it didn't last. Sure, kids are great, but they don't fix your life. Problems don't just disappear. We all have those moments when we're alone and lonely in the middle of the night and you're full of fear, full of regret. You haven't got a monopoly on those. Your success doesn't shield you from facing the things we all have to face. Drink those. What will you do if it all goes away? I don't know. I'll try to see what's off to the side. And what the fuck does that mean? Sit in the garden, paint. You don't know this won't work. Can you carry on trying? You've been a, a brother to me. And you to me. I tell religious jokes. Most of us are adults and we find them funny, or we don't. <laughs> there was a time when some parts of Irish society took issue with me telling these jokes and I received threats, serious, possibly, and one time visiting Dublin, I was meeting my brother for a drink and to be on the safe side, we took a taxi to a pub outside of town. We got there, we got to the bar, ordered some drinks and after a while, this man comes in and sits off down to the side of the bar. Didn't order a drink, but after a while, we noticed that he was looking over at us every now and again. And to be on the safe side, we left, went to another bar, and exactly the same thing happened. Shortly after we arrived, this man comes in, sits off down to the side, doesn't order a drink, starts looking over at us. Again, we left. Next bar, same thing happens. In the fourth bar, I can't stand it anymore. I march over to this man, I grab him by the lapels, I throw him to the floor. Who are you? Who are you? Why are you following us? And the man says, I'm your taxi driver. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Oh, no. No. How? <sighs> no, I'll come. No, thanks for calling. Yes. <sighs> thanks. Bless you for that. Such a shame. Like I say, he was the funniest brother, you know. 
just to fix on having a good time. Great guy. I haven't seen him for years. I don't know what happened to him. I gave up. Bully for you. I wish I could. The Lord only gives you strength for so much. I'll not rise to that. I thought that was your job. <laughs> oh, I hate smoking now. Can't stand it. Or the fact that I was ever stupid enough to get conned into it in the first place. He thought the world of you, you know. And me, him. You did as much as anyone possibly could to help him. You can't blame yourself. I don't. I blame God. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I do feel guilty. How could I not? But I also don't see what else I could have done. He carved his path just as you carved yours. You mustn't think he didn't do his best. I'm sure he did, in his way. Yeah, I think he was true to himself. I tried to be. He made a choice. Yeah, he did. We all do. I don't think he chose death. We can't tell. But I believe God knows. And John's with God now. He's found peace. Come on, Father, you've been a friend for years and I know you're trying to help, but what a load of bollocks. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the show. It's slightly different to previous shows. It's shorter, there are no sketches. Frankly, it's cheap. I have, in fact, retired, but in order to live in the style I'm used to, I need to work. An Irish retirement. You don't need it. I swear in my stage show, your TV audience is different. It's already a new style of show. We are all ruled by time, whether we like it or not. Slaves to time, to the clock. We get out of bed to the clock. We go to work to the clock. I think it'll alienate people. They don't like swearing in the homes. What, at half ten on a Saturday night? Before match of the day. It's family viewing for some. We get the train to the clock, we, we get our lunch to the clock, we leave work to the clock. Why risk offending them? Why mess it up with one word? I don't think that I will. We get home to the clock, we have our dinner to the clock, we go to bed to the clock. You don't need it. You're Dave fucking Alan, for Christ's sake. There, you see? You said it. Sometimes only a fuck will do. And after we've spent our whole lives living to the clock, we finally get to retire. And after all of that, what do they give you? A fucking clock! <laughs> Hello, BBC Complaints Department. <laughs> ah, yes, we've had a lot of calls about... I don't see... Is match of the day ri... And you objected to... Yes, it was strong language. I think... In context, I really think... <laughs> if you would just let me... Sometimes only that word, <laughs> madam, please. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> you should be staying outside. Why? Fuss. TV's Mr. Sweary and all that carry on. Let them say what they want to say. What? You just got to ignore it. Well, some people need to get upset. Religion? A word? What can I do? It's a good Anglo-Saxon word. Everybody uses it. It's a, a stress mark, a release. I'm not going to sanitize my mouth or my show. I do what I do. I think that I'm right and they're wrong. I can't do anything about that either. I put my finger on the block, and I say you want to chalk, 
And you say I definitely knew it, and... There you go. You got it. You figure it out in your head, you laugh at it, you forget about it, and you get on with living. That's the best way. Then again, you're a bright one, maybe you'll think of a better way. Bug it if I can. Do you know what's for dinner? Finger rolls! And there's nine of them. Same as you. Is that true? Yeah. That's quite funny. A bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your mother's coming. Play dead. We've all been gassed by a stray German bomb. That's a bit mean. Shut up, she loves it. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> They've all been killed for sure. Whatever will I do? Oh, woe! Woe is me! <laughs> what did I tell you? A man dies, goes to heaven, gets lost. It's vast, no idea where to go. Suddenly, an angel appears. Why, hello, are you lost? Yes, I am. Well, why don't I show you the ropes? Why, I'd like that very much, thank you. What's in this room here? Oh, well, that's the Muslim room, and this, this room is for the Hindus, and that's the Jewish room, and that is for the Anglicans. And suddenly, the angel's voice drops to a whisper. Oh, you must be very quiet and tiptoe past this one. Why? Who's in there? The Catholics. They think they're the only ones in here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night, and may your God go with you. <laughs> <laughs>